Hey, Wonder Hussy here, hanging out in the Panamint Valley in the little tiny ghost town of Ballarat, which is right here at the base of the Panamint Mountains. And I guess it was really a town only from like 1897 to 1917 or something like that. It had a pretty short lifespan, but what a lifespan it was. I mean, I think there was only something like a couple hundred people living there, but gosh, I think there was like seven saloons and four brothels. And I mean, there's all these mines up in these canyons above Ballarat and above this valley. So all the miners from all these canyons would come down here and party. I mean, apparently up in Pleasant Canyon, there's a, an old abandoned uh, gold mining camp called Clare Camp. Well, I heard on good authority that the fine folks at Clare Camp weren't just mining and milling gold. They were also moonshiners and they made a lot of whiskey and that whiskey was what fueled Ballarat. Anyway, that all died down around 1917 and nowadays you go to Ballarat, there is not much left there. There's a few old ruins of buildings and a, kind of a general store that I think used to be a garage or something. Uh, but oof, there's only one person that lives here. <laughs> And that's it, a bunch of burrows. But there's also another attraction here that's kind of far out in the desert. You can see the store is way over there. So most people, when they come to Ballarat, just hit the store. There's an old truck in the front that supposedly used to belong to Charles Manson. You know, people go into the store, use the bathroom, buy a soda. I mean, when I say store, by the way, I should be using quotation marks because it's really just a very informal, shady place with a cooler with some sodas in it and I think beer maybe but that's about it but most people don't bother to actually come out here and explore if you walk across the desert there's an old pioneer cemetery here with what looks to be some really old graves so I thought it might be fun to go in here and poke around see what we can find okay so a lot of these graves are so old there's just no information or writing on the headstone at all. So I don't even know how, if we're going to be able to identify who's in any of these things. I mean, it's kind of like I did a video at the cemetery outside Death Valley Junction. And the ground there was even more hard packed than this. The ground out there is like a dry lake bed. So that would have been really hard to dig graves into. This at least, this ground here is more like a... Well, I mean, it's very hard packed, but I feel like that'd be easier to dig than... Playa, you know? Oh, here, this one here, you can kind of very faintly see. It says something, but what? Almost looks like it says, God something child. God bless the children, maybe? Boy, that's really sad. I wonder if that's a kid's grave. I mean, if you look at it, well, I was going to say, if you look at it, it looks short, but they all look short, so never mind. Oh, God, creepy. Look at this one, though. This is kind of spooky. Old wooden cross. Somebody put a quarter on it for good luck, I guess. Okay, here's a couple of graves that actually have information on them. Let's see, this one says... I think it says, Neil J. Cummins, born September 14th, 1945, died November 26th, 1988. So only 43 years old. He knows no boundaries in God's hands. Boy, those miners lived... Uh, Live fast, died young, huh? Look at this one, though. This one's easy to read. Benjamin Smith Bennett, May 21st, 1876, died June 8th, 1937. So this dude was here in the heyday of Ballarat. Huh. I guess he maybe raised some hell at the saloons and maybe even visited one or two of the brothels. Okay, and then look at this one. Michael J. Sherlock, August... 1886 to November 1935? 85? Gosh, I don't know. Whew. Crazy. Oh, look at the one behind him. The one behind him, also no name, but there's a really cool, kind of creepy angel. I think that was an angel, or gosh, I don't even know what that is. That's creepy. Boy, none of these other graves really say anything. Really spooky. I mean, that's the desert for you. It just bakes away all record of who you were, when you were born, when you died. 
And then eventually the desert just takes right back over your grave. Plants start growing over it. And then before you know it, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, you're back in the desert. I mean, I guess that little, uh, what do you call that, kind of wire rope fence is enough to keep burrows from pooping on the grave. So it's the least they can do in a lonely desert graveyard is keep the deceased from suffering the indignities of the burrows. Anyways, look at this grave. This looks like they just kind of used whatever materials they had at hand. I mean, isn't that like fire brick from a kiln? AP green. And then look on top of the grave. John Zink. And then look how those are curved. That looks like it was part of some kind of kiln or something. I mean, hey, you use what you can out here. This one here looks kind of fancy. Like this must have been a very important guy. <laughs> But what difference does it make when you're dead? Doesn't matter how much money you had in life, we all end up in the same place. You know what I mean? Like this guy here with his fancy fence right next door to this poor guy here who's just a mound of dirt. It's all the same in the end. This one here has part of a creepy statue. It looks like it was holding a torch or something and some classy person put a broken beer bottle neck on top of it. Now this guy must have been important. He had a headstone that was even uh, had a plate written on it with his name. John L. Benny 1859 to 1908. Wow he died right after Ballarat died. Okay no name on this guy. Oh this one here though. Look at this. Let's see who this was. Joseph H. Gorsline, born Randolph, New York in 1849, died in Los Angeles, 1924. Well, why is he buried here? Boy, if that doesn't beat all, how did he end up all the way out here? We're like four hours from Los Angeles. And then look who he's next to. This one's just this little tiny grave. Almost looks like it must have been a kid, but I don't know that there were any kids in Ballarat. It seemed like to me it was mostly miners and good time gals. Okay, and this grave here is very interesting. Looks like a couple is buried here. The Riggles. Norman and Phyllis Riggle. Died in 2004 and 2005. And then Jackpot, which I'm assuming must have been their dog, lived from 1960 to 1972. 12 years, that's decent lifespan for a dog. But it's interesting, like if the dog died in 1972 and they didn't die until 2004, 2005, that's like 20... Wait a minute, I can do this math. 28 plus 4, 32 years. So they, uh, did they hang on to their dead dog for 32 years and then bury it with him? Maybe it was like they had it cremated and they put the ashes in there with him. I guess that makes sense. Okay, now we're coming up on the fanciest grave in the whole cemetery. It's got a wrought iron fence around it. It's even got a gate that swings open and closed. It looks like people are still leaving flowers and money on it, so apparently it was somebody that people still really like or think about. Uh, it's interesting because there's a pair of boots down there, like kind of like hiking type boots. And then over here hanging on the fence, there's a pair of hiking shoes that don't look that old. And then there's this really cool old uh, like sun hat hanging on this side. Look at this. I mean, that looks like that was maybe the hat belonging to whoever's buried here interesting oh wow look at the hat band it says death valley on it that's cool and there's also a ton of money coins thrown on this grave so people apparently hold whoever this is in high esteem oh uh, i see this is the grave of charles furge seldom seen slim a prospector who lived from 1889 to 1968 so he was like 79 years old look at what it says me lonely hell no i'm half coyote and half wild burrow okay now that is cool seldom seen slim i guess was the most famous resident of ballarat he was an old prospector who well they called him seldom seen slim because he was probably skinny and he was seldom seen because he was always up in these canyons prospecting i don't think he hung around civilization much um but i think he lived here in ballarat for the last several years of his life. I think he might have been the caretaker of the ghost town, kind of like if you go here nowadays, there's this guy, Rock Novak, who lives there and takes care of it. He's sort of like, I guess, the forebearer or the precursor to Rock Novak. And he sounds like he was a real character. I mean, 
Me, lonely? Hell no. I'm half coyote and half wild girl. I love that. You know, I mean, it's very desolate out here. I was talking to Rock Novak, the current caretaker, last night, and he said his closest neighbor is 30 miles away. Okay? Trona is like 30 miles that way. That's the closest town, and that's not even much of a town. And then Panamint Springs, which is even less of a town, is 30 miles that way in Death Valley. So, boy, he has no neighbors closer than 30 miles, and that's, I would assume that gets pretty lonesome. But I guess guys like Seldom Seen Slim and Rock Novak, for that matter, probably enjoy the solitude, you know? Like, look how peaceful these mountains are back there. Like, way in the distance there. You can see my rig. I think. Wait, hold on. There's my rig. And my friend Larry hanging out there waiting for me. But man, there is nothing else out here. So, you know, a certain type of person would just appreciate that solitude. Me lonely? Hell no! I think Rock Novak does get kind of lonely sometimes though, because I was talking to him once and he was saying, it was this was in like March, when the weather finally started warming up enough where a lot of tourists started coming through on the way to Death Valley and they stop off here and he seemed to really enjoy that, like the people coming in and meeting people. And he said that this was the best time of the year for him because, you know, he had all kind of visitors. So if you do happen to be driving along the road from Trona to Death Valley, I think it's called Panamint Valley Road, uh, stop in, stop into Ballarat. It's definitely worth uh, stopping in, taking a look, say hi to Rock, spend a little time visiting with him, get a soda. Uh, and if you're inclined, walk out here across the desert and check out the cemetery. I mean, the shame is a lot of people that stop into Ballarat go way over there to the general store, which is really just kind of a busted old garage with a cooler full of sodas in it. But uh, people generally just stop there, get a soda, use the bathroom and check out the truck that supposedly belonged to Charles Manson here. There's this truck parked in front of the store that supposedly belonged to Charles Manson. So there's a lot of Charles Manson lore in this area. Well, that's what most people who stop here do. I would guess very few people actually take the trek. It's not that long of a walk across the desert from the store out to this cemetery. But hey, this cemetery is well worth exploring. I found it to be very interesting. Oh wait, look, I just saw one more thing on seldom seen Slim's grave. This old liquor bottle. I guess he was a boozer. I wonder what kind of, what kind of booze this was. Oh, there's water in it or booze or something. Anybody recognize that style of bottle? What that was? It looks like some kind of fancy cordial or something. Huh, I wonder what his drink was. What's your poison, seldom seen Slim? What did you drink? I should bring my Ouija board out here sometime and try to contact him and find out what he liked to drink. And then I could come out here every year on his birthday and mix him a cocktail and have one myself. But again, just like with that other fancy grave, it doesn't really matter how fancy your grave is, you still end up in the same place as the guy with a wooden board as a headstone and nothing but a mound of dirt. No hiking boots, no bottle of booze, no flowers on this one. But they're neighbors for all eternity. Okay, there's one other corner of this lonely old pioneer cemetery we gotta check out. And that's way over here in the corner. There's three little graves. And apparently, I think this is the pet cemetery annex. Because look at these. 9384. Here lies Missy, just the little dog who for 15 years enriched our lives with her love and devotion. Sleep in peace, little friend. Larry and Linda Dodd. Aww, that's so sad. Uh oh, you hear that? It's so surreal, this old timey pioneer cemetery in this old desert ghost town gets flyovers on the daily by all these F-15s and A-10s and whatnot out of, I guess, China Lake Naval Air Weapons Station is, well, right there. So <laughs> it's just funny to think of these old prospectors slumbering bones and then these crazy modern high-tech fighter jets flying overhead. It's one of those weird juxtapositions that I absolutely love about this part of the country. Okay, and then next to Missy, we have Roxy. Aw, look at this one. Rest in paradise, Roxy. You left paw prints on our hearts. 
Oh, and look, somebody left money on Roxy's grave. Somebody actually left money on Missy's grave too. That's cool. Dogs can be our best friends. That's sweet. And then just like in the people part of the graveyard, it looks like there's an old uh, pet grave here that doesn't have any headstone on it or anything. So, oh, rest in peace, little fella, whoever's buried here. Okay, wow, it was super interesting exploring this little pioneer cemetery. It's honestly more interesting than I thought it was going to be. I just thought it was going to be a bunch of weathered old crosses with no information, which is cool to look at, but kind of anticlimactic. But wow, that had just enough information to make it interesting. So I hope you enjoyed looking at it with me, and I hope you'll consider visiting it yourself next time you stop in at Ballarat Ghost Town. And when you do, be sure to tell Rock Novak I said hi.